Now my topic is cancer targeted drug delivery system. Cancer agents are the drug or other substances that block the growth and the spread of a cancer by interfering with the molecules that are more specifically involved in a cancer cell growth and progression than in normal cell activity. These drugs they can act on a cell markers or the pathway to prevent the cells from replicating or from proliferation. Targeted therapy, they are known as molecular targeted therapies or the drugs. The goal of targeted therapy is to get rid of the cancerous cell. By leaving the normal cells, it is unharmed. By focusing, focusing on the changes in a cell that is specific to the cancer, like in cancer cells, there, is, there are specific changes, changes in, a, uh, changes in a temperature, changes in a pH, or some receptors, they are expressed on a cancer cells. So we can focus them as a targeted uh, drug delivery system and it may be more effective than chemotherapy and the radiation therapy. Your specific action can be made targeted therapy less harmful to the normal cells because you are targeting to the specific, specific cells. So it make your normal cells unharmed. Targeted therapies are drugs that can act on a cell biomarkers and or pathway to prevent the cells from replicating or proliferating. So biomarkers can be used as a target agents Biomarkers has been defined as anatomic, physiologic, biochemical, or molecular parameters that is associated with the presence and severity of a specific disease state. These biomarkers, they are, they are genes or proteins. Biomarkers used as a target for drug therapies, they fall into the, follow into the various category. However, not all predictive biomarkers, they are the target. For example, tumors produces many types of a protein. Some proteins are involved in a process, whereas other are the byproduct. So both protein may help predict which patient will or will not respond to a particular treatment. However, the drugs that target the byproduct, they are not actually more effective, whereas the drugs that target the protein, they are more, weak, more active to treat the cancer. Now you can see here the examples of a biomarkers and the condition in which they are expressed. The reactive protein, it is expressed in case of inflammation. High co uh, cholesterol, it is a biomarker for the cardiovascular disease. S11-114, it is a biomarker for melanoma. HER2 gene, this is the biomarker for the breast cancer. Similarly, BRCA genes for breast and ovarian cancer. Prostate-specific antigen for prostate cancer. CA125 for the ovarian cancer. Cerebral blood flow for the Alzheimer's disease high body temperature for the infection, and size of a brain structure for the Huntington's disease. An example of targeted chemothera cancer chemotherapy directed at a biomarker is trans map. This drug it is directed against the protein, which is known as HER. That is its full form is human epitopal growth factor receptor 2. Approximate one-sixth of all breast cancers, they contain the copy of HER2 genes, which go on to produce too much HER2 protein. Now, this protein participates in a pathway that causes breast cancer to grow and divide more quickly. If you block the HER2 protein using the, the transducimab, then there will be the cell division will be reduced in the cancer cells. And in this way, you can help or treat the breast cancer. You can see here in the diagram, you can see here in the diagram, the cell from a person in the normal HER2, in a normal normal person you can see here less HER2 protein it is expressed but in case of a transducive map you can see in a transducive map the first the antibody it is bind with the protein there are so there are so many protein can be expressed and the antibodies target these protein in a normal cell there are less number of a HER2 protein protein you can see but in cancer cells too much HER2 protein it is expressed and that can be the targeted area for the trans map. Cell pathways. Cell pathways are the chain of event that is involved many molecules and interaction that allows cells to communicate with their environment and with one another. 
they are sometimes referred to as cell signaling pathway or signal transduction pathway. Activation of a pathway can alter the cell behavior by influencing whether certain genes it is expressed or it is suppressed. It can affect the cell behavior by altering the levels of a key protein that regulate a critical cellular process. Cell communicate with the environment in different ways. One method of the communication that it releases the chemicals. Chemicals are what? They are the protein that input growth factors and the hormones. These chemicals they bind with the receptor that is located outside of the cell. This binding they initiate a series of events once they bind. These events can involve multiple pathways and they involve many proteins and chemicals. Activation of these pathways they result in alteration of a gene. That is the protein involved in the pathway eventually carry information to the cell nucleus where genes are either activated or it can be inhibited. Alternatively, pathway can affect the key protein that regulate the important part of a cellular behavior, such as survival and the growth. A growth factor binding to a receptor is the signal that activates the pathway that is responsible for the growth and activation. If you block this receptor, the targeted therapy like transtuzumab prevents the activation of a growth pathway and hence the cell will not be grow, it will not be rapid. You can see in the diagram number one step that the signaling protein is here. It is expressing DNA activation. It results in a cell. Then after that, the receptor, it will bind with the protein that will trigger the chain reaction. And one of the protein, it will process the cell and it will affect the DNA. Then DNA activation, it results in a cell growth and a proliferation. So monoclonal antibodies are the protein that is made in the laboratory that can cause the material or any drug bind to the substances in a body to include component of a cancer cell. Monoclonal antibodies attach themselves to the substance or cancer on cancer cells, thereby block the signals for a cell growth and proliferation. In some cases, the attachment of monoclonal antibodies to cancer cells, it will lead to the death of cancer. Cancer as large protein monoclonal antibodies cannot typically enter the cell. For this reason, they bind to the specific substances or a part of a substance that is expressed on a cell. Now you can see here in the diagram the structure of antibodies. You can see here that here the structure is Y-shaped, that is Y-shaped antibodies, and the Y-shaped antibodies it is bind to the antigen, which is a this Y-shaped protein, it binds with the substances which is known as antigen. Antigen are the substances that causes the immune system to build the antigen. So every type of antibodies it has capability to bind the antigen so that to fit together like a key in a lock. Now how we can produce the antigen? First you have to immunize the mice, then you have to isolate the immune cell. Now finally the myeloma cell it will fused with the plasma cell and it will produce the hybrid Hybrid cell, it will be screened for the protection of a good antibody. Antibody producing hybrid cell, it will replicate. After that, you will get monoclonal antibodies. Two types of antibodies you can see naked monoclonal antibodies and conjugated monoclonal antibodies. Naked antibodies mean they do not have any drug or radioactive molecule that is binded with them. And conjugated monoclonal antibodies means which is having chemotherapeutic drug or radioactive substance which is bind to the cell. So examples, it is given in the table, radio labeled in which the monoclonal antibodies is attached to the small radioactive material and their targeted agent, it is, it is the CD20 antigen. Now chemo labeled, here the monoclonal antibodies, it is attached to the chemotherapeutic drug. Now and the targeted agent, it is CD30 antigen, immunotoxin, that is the monoclonal antibody is attached to the cellular toxins, but till no project has been approved. Now treatment with the monoclonal antibody. Alentuzumab. Alentuzumab, it is a humanized, unconjugated monoclonal antibody that is used to treat the patients with the leukemia. It is bind with the protein, which is known as CD5-2 protein antigen. It is, a, it is a protein that is located on the surface of white blood cells, such as B cells and T cells. Following attachment to the antigen, alum to zumab initiate the destruction of a cell by the immune system mechanism. Bevacizumab, it is a humanized and conjugated monoclonal antibody that is directed against the vascular and the bone factor, which we call the EGF. 
Now, cancer needs constant blood supply, which they get from the blood and the, from where they get the blood and where they get the oxygen and the nutrients. They want oxygen and nutrients to grow and proliferate. Now, BEGF is a growth factor that stimulates the new blood vessels formation, which helps the tumor to grow. So, BEVA lab, it binds with the BEGF to form a complex that prevents BEGF from binding to its receptors on the surface of a cell. BEGF is the signal that initiates the growth pathway in vascular endothelial cells. Without BEGF signal, the growth pathway does not activate. No growth of these cells, no blood vessels will be formed. So without new blood vessels, the cancer will not spread, it will not heal. So that is all the tumors need a blood supply in BEGF, which is the key factor that is required for the generation of a blood supply. Small molecule inhibition. Small molecule inhibitor, they are the drug that interfere with the normal cell pathway, such as rapamycin. Most monoclonal antibodies, they are bind with the protein that is fine on the surface of a cell. Now, a small molecule inhibitor, on the other hand, they can bind with the molecules of, or a protein that is found inside the cell. One of the major, major reasons for this difference is that a small molecular inhibitor, they are very small as compared to the molecular antibody. So size, it is the most important determinant of a drug ability to cross the map. Small molecule inhibitor, they have a small molecule, so they can cross the, cross the membrane and they can reach inside of the cell. Smaller molecules in drugs, they have easier time entering than to larger molecules. Small molecular inhibitor, they inhibit with or inhibit cell processes, such as growth, proliferation, movement, and new blood vessels form. Many of the small molecular inhibitors are able to inhibit the proteins such as kinase, or more specifically, tyrosine kinase. Kinases are the enzymes that transfer the chemical or phosphate group from one place in the cell to the another. The transfer of a phosphate group within cells, they act as a cellular switch, turning off or on a variety of cellular functions. Tyrosine kinase, this is the type of a kinase that transfer the phosphate group from important cell energy molecule, which is known as ATP, adenosine triphosphate, to specific places on the protein. The growth factor binds to the portion or a domain of a receptor that is located outside. This causes the change in a shape of a receptor and causes two of a receptor protein to associate. This causes the activation of the tyrosine kinase domain, which are inside the cell. Activation of tyrosine kinase leads to the activation or inhibition of other protein eventually causing the cell growth for replication. So you can see here in the diagram that the growth factor group, which will bind with the domain, growth factor binding domain. After binding with the, with the domains, growth, this causes the activation of a tyrosine kinase domain that is inside the cell. So there is a conformational changes it will bring the part of the tyrosine kinase which is inside the cell because of the changes in the conformation, now the tyrosine kinase become activated to proceed further. Imatinib. Now imatinib binds with the tyrosine kinase and it prevents the protein from transferring the phosphate group. In this way, the imatinib inhibit the activity of a tyrosine kinase and treat chronic myelo myelogenous leukemia in a type of lymphoblastic leukemia. Now what is so, so may activate the pro-apoptotic factors to enhance the cell death. Botizomib, it is used to treat two types of blood cancer, myeloma and the mantle cell lymphoma. Iverulimus, Iverulimus is a small molecule inhibitor that acts on a protein which is known as mammalian target of rapamycin. mTOR helps regulate the cell growth and a proliferation metabolism, protein synthesis and apoptosis. Aborimus, is used to treat several types of cancer. This includes advanced HER2 negative, hormone receptor positive breast cancer in postmenopausal women in combination with as an esteem after failure of a treatment with letrozole or anestrozole, progressive neuroendocrine tumor of pancreatic origin, renal cell carcinoma, etc. Tumor targeted by targeting by a nanocarrier. Now, the nanoparticle considered, it is used for the uh, cancer treatment, have a diameter range 10 to 100 nanometer. Now, these nanocarriers, they should possess the certain characteristics in order to target the cancer cells. Uh, they should have number one, 
ability to remain stable in a vascular system until they reach their target. Then to escape the reticular endothelial system, which is REA system clearance, it should escape the mononuclear phagocytic system and accumulate in a tumor microenvironment via tumor, tumor vasculature. High pressure penetration into the tumor field should, field should be there, reach the target area and only interact with the tumor cell. Do not cause any binding or interaction or killing to the normal cells. So the targeting mechanism of nanoparticle can be broadly classified into the two group, passive and the active target. Passive target. You know that under certain condition, hypoxia or inflammation, the endothelium layer of the blood vessels become more permeable. So under hypoxia situation, the rapidly growing tumor cells tend to put in action more blood vessels or engulf the existing bone to coke up. This process is, is new, known as new vascularization. These new blood vessels, which is formed, they are leaky. They have a large force when it is compared with the normal blood vessels. So nano carriers, because of the small size, they are potentially accumulate in a tumor through passive targeting because of the leaky vasculature and defective, defective, defective lymphatic drainage in a solid tumor. The leaky and defective vasculature created due to the rapid vascularization, vital or important to the support of a malignant tumor, coupled with the imperfect lymphatic, lymphatic drainage, allows the EBRA. There will be the enhanced formation and retention effect in the tumor cells. Passive targeting is mainly based on a diffusion. So as a result, the size it is very important. Because the small size, nano size, so there will be the enhanced penetration. Studies have indicated that the nanometer size, approximate 40 to 400 nanometer, which is suitable to ensure the non circulation and enhanced accumulation in a tumor with reduced renal clearance. Surface properties also plays an important role in internalization process of a drug particle into target cells. To avoid the opsonization and subsequent clearance by the RA system, surface modification of a polymer using, for, using the polyfluid glycol as a surfactant can be effective to a certain, certain extent. Thus, the EPR based drug delivery system can be modulated by modifying the size, shape, and sometimes by surface alteration of the nanoparticle. You can see here the passive targeting. Now you can see here that the cancer cells is there. They are leaky. So when the nanoparticles, it is injected into the blood circulation, because of the leaky vasculature, they will be, they will be, they have a target. They have the ability to penetrate the leaky vasculature and retain in the leaky vasculature of a tumor cell and remain there for a long period of time, release the drug and kill the tumor cell selectively. Example, US FDA in 2005 approved the abrexane albumin bind vasculitexel, which is used for advanced or metastatic breast cancer. Genoxol PM is an innovative nano formulation of vasculitexel and its sterile lyophilized polymeric micelle formulation found to have three times higher maximum tolerated dose in a new device. Now, second targeting approach, you can say that it is the active targeting for the tumor. This is achieved through the decoration of a carrier surfaces with ligand that is bind to the receptor that is expressed on a tumor. This strategy will approve the affinity of a drug-loaded carrier for the surface of cancer cells and thus enhance the drug penetration. This targeting is known as ligand-mediated targeting. This strategy enhances the changes of a nanoparticles binding to the cancer cells and thus enhances the drug penetration. Herceptin, this is a therapeutic drug that targets the human endothelial growth factor receptor that is overexpressed on the breast cancer cell surface. HER2 targeted degylated liposomal toxin reductase was developed to reduce the cardiotoxicity, a known side effect of cyclic. Now, the biodegradable nanoparticle is developed and it will target it on glycoprotein that is expressed in hepatic mast cells for paclitaxel delivery using polyglutamic acid, polylactide, block coat polymer, which is prepared by emulsion solvent evaporation technique. The nanoparticle will were conjugated with galactosamine via the amide linkage to form galactosamine nanoparticle. It will show enhanced uptake to the tumor cell that express the glycoprotein receptors on their surface. 
the study revealed that active targeting nature of such nanoparticles represent a high degree of selectivity to hepatic tumor with enhanced cellular uptake via receptor mediated endocytosis. Now, similarly, the folate binding protein, which is glycoside phosphatidyl inositol, it is attached with a cell surface receptor for the folate, which is expressed in various type of type of human cancer, including ovarian and neutral, colorectal, breast, lung, and renal cell carcinoma, as well as well as in brain cancer that is obtained from the epithelial cancer and absent in a normal tissue. For this reason, the folic acid can be used as a ligand and it can be covalently conjugated with the anti-cancer drugs and it is used for selective delivery of an anti-cancer agent to the solid tumor. In last year, the researchers scored the nanoparticles with a targeting molecule which recognizes a protein which is less PS and which is prostate-specific number inclusion, which is found abundantly on the surface of our most prostate tumor cells as well as many other types of tumors. The nanoparticles have a three components. One that carry the drug, deposit axon. Second, the target, the PSM, that is the prostate specific membrane. And the third one that helps activate the microphages and other immune system cells. So the research of a phase one clinical trial surprised that the high targeting efficiency of drug delivery system, it is about 100 times in reduced dose, where the dose has been reduced to 20% as compared to the conventional doses. Now targeting by the aptamers. Aptamers are the nucleic acid ligands that is suited for the drug targeting controlled release polymeric particles in a cell or tissue specific manner. Aptamers are a RNA or a DNA oligonucleotides which fold by intramolecular interaction into the unique 3 d dimensional capable of binding to the target antigen with high affinity and specificity. Small size allow more diffusion through the solid tumors, lack of immunogenicity, ease of isolation, remarkable stability over the wide range of pH, temperature, pH and organic solvent without loss of activity, low cost, high affinity, comparable to monoclonal antibodies for binding to almost any one. When targeted to the cancer cells, the nanoparticle aptamer bioconjugate or was internalized and preferentially released the cytotoxic agent inside the cells. Polymeric nanoparticle. The advantage of using polymeric nanoparticle is to allow encapsulation of bioactive molecules and protect them against enzymatic and hydrolytic degradation. Polymer drug conjugate in the nanometer size take all advantage of nanomedicine, including solubility enhancement of hydrophobic drugs, prolonged blood circulation and accumulation at a leaky tissues by EPR effect, which is enhanced formation and retention. The specific targeting ligands such as antibodies, folic acid, or transferrin can be preferentially conjugated on the nanoparticle surface for the efficient target. Polymeric mice. Polymeric micelles are the nano-sized particles that is made up of, made up of polymer sheets and they are formed by self-assembly in a liquid as a result of hydrophobic or ion pair interaction with the polymer segment. Micelles typically have so-called core shell structure. The core of a micelles, which is a hydrophobic part or the ionic part of a nanoparticle, they serve as a reservoir for the hydrophobic drug. It means the hydrophobic drug will be entrapped in a core while the shell provides the interaction with the solvent, solvent and make the nanoparticle stable in the liquid. This means the, this makes these type of structure interesting for the drug delivery. Polymeric micelles are composed of block or tough po polymer. Block or polymer, they contain the linear polymer segments and it is composed of at least two polymer segments, which differ in physical chemical properties. Prolonged circulation in blood stream through the EPR effect and sustained release are generally acceptable advantages of polymer micelles, but two drawbacks are associated with polymeric micelles, low drug loading capacity and the low stability in adverse medium. Now dendrimers. Dendrimers are nanometer sized hyperbranch macromolecules that consist central core, branching units and then terminal functional groups. Targeting it is achieved by attaching the specific ligand to the external surface of a dendrimer, which enable it to bind to the receptors that are expressed on the surface of a cancer cell. Now, these ligands, they bind to the receptors that is expressed on a cancer cell 
and therefore it carry out the receptor mediated endocytosis and finally the internalization of the whole conjugate into the cancer cell. Anti-cancer agents can be either encapsulated or conjugated to the dendrite and be delivered to the tumor via the enhanced formation and retention effect of the nanoparticles. Prior study suggested that folic acid conjugation through the modified parameters has increased targeting efficiency and it was found to be less toxic when compared with the free drug at equal cumulative doses. Lipid-based nanocarriers such as liposomes, they are defined as self-assembly close, particulate drug carrier which are formed spontaneous by dispersion of phospholipid in the aqueous medium. The resultant closed membrane structure, it can accommodate amphipilic or lipophilic, uh, lipophilic drugs incorporated into or associated with the lipid bilayer, having hydrophilic compounds within the aqueous inner compartment. The system offers the several advantages such as concentration of lipophilic drug in aqueous medium can be increased. Second, lipophilic carrier can prevent the enzymatic degradation of the incorporated drug. Liposomal formulation such as gylated liposomal drugs, it is, it is available by the Elsa Johnson and Johnson in the US and non pigylated liposomal drugs by myosin by Elan, liposomal genorubicin that is by the Gylet, liposomal cytarabine by, uh, by Sky Pharma and liposomal cisplatin by lipoplatin by Regulone. They are approved already for the treatment of so many types of cancers. Stimuli sensitive nanocarrier. The concept is based upon the fact that tumors normally have a lower pH value on the tumor area. And the higher temperature is there when it is compared with the normal cells. So, stimuli sensitive nanocarriers, they are known as a smart material. They release the drug in the spatial condition of a tumor. There are two types of stimulus external and intrinsic. Extrinsic that involve the local application of a heat, ultrasound, or light, or intrinsic that is the low extracellular pH of a tumor environment or upregulated protease expression. External stimulus such as magnetic nanoparticle uses the external magnet, photoresponse is a thermoresponsive polymer that can change their property with the extrinsic source of a light and provide light and heat and thus provide an interesting example of this class of material. Thermosensitive sensitive macromolecule, they are made up of polymers such as poly and isopropyl acrylamide that exhibit lower critical solution temperature, that is minimum temperature that a polymer can tolerate. Mild clinical hypothermia at the tumor regions undergoes localized aggregation of systemically delivered carrier and improve the tissue accumulation. Polymer chains may be extended due to increased temperature, and because of the extension of a polymer chains, here is the diffusion of a drug molecules from the polymer. In magnetic nanoparticle approach, cytotoxic drug it is attached to the magnetic carrier, which is ferrofluid, and it is focused to the specific target size with the site within the body by the high gradient magnetic field. They offer several advantages over other targeting strategies, such as high targeting efficiency transport the drug to the tumor cells, control size ranging from few to 10 nanometer, and destroy the cell through the heating effect. Carboplating, iron loaded cytosine nanoparticles, they prepared by reverse microemulsion method, can effectively raise tumor tissue temperature by static magnetic targeting, and they will facilitate the tumor death. When a magnetic power of nanoparticle, it is coupled with the pH sensitivity of a novel biodegradable polymeric system, there are additional targeting capabilities performed. A nanoparticle, it is composed of a gold shell, which, which is surrounded by a semiconductor, it was prepared. When nano shells reach their target, they can be irradiated to make the nano shell hot, and the heat kills the cancer cells. The gold particle is directed to the cancer cells via the ligands or antibodies, and they produce the photo induced heating by the external stimuli to kill these cells selectively. Cells are sensitive to a small increase in the temperature, and an increase of few degrees can lead to the cell death. Coupling to or more targeting strategies are found to be evolutionary in treating certain types of cancer. 
complete disappearance of more than 50% of tumor is observed in mice treated with gold coated magnetic nano particle when compared with the gold nanospheres that showed slight reduction in a tumor growth. Internal stimuli that the tumor extracellular space is poorly perfused region. It is highly acidic compared with the surrounding normal tissue. And what is the reason for that? It is the high metabolic rate and in or adequate oxygen supply. Real sensitive nanoparticle, it is designed to be activated by low pH, release the drug into the acidic extracellular space of a solid chain. Now, the methotrexate drug, they were prepared for breast cancer treatment. The drug was loaded into the gelatin coated spherical nanoparticle. Now, gold nanoparticles and nano road shaped nanoparticles, it was prepared. Now, the highest release it will be it found using the gelatin coated gold nanoparticles, nano gold nano roads at an acidic pH of 5.4. Moreover, the highest cytotoxicity was recorded when methotrexate loaded gelatin coated gold nano roads were used instead of nano particles. Thank you so much.